welcome to Quantum Command Radio, where we talk about all things quantum. You can visit our website at www.quantumcommand.net or subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and hit that bell button for the latest and greatest within the quantum realm. Together, we will discuss topics related to quantum command, wellness, and explore all the new discoveries within this work. And now, let's go quantum. Okay, so I am back in the car again. This is Natalie Morris with Quantum Command, and my first podcast this morning was what I was, I wanted to talk about something else, but I ended up talking about glyphosate. So now I'm in the car and I'm on the way home. And uh, so maybe I can talk about now what I wanted to talk about this morning. But we were having a good time riffing off glyphosate there for a little bit. So that was interesting anyway, I thought. So I'm sorry again about the beeping. I have this like alert on my car that keeps not letting me ignore it. I hit the button and it just keeps telling me. Anyway, so this morning what I wanted to talk about was I was thinking about this as I was getting ready to go. And one of the things that people run into when they experience this work is that number one, it's not super ethereal. You know, you're not, we're not moving chakras or energies or we're not doing any of that. What you find when you have an appointment with me is it's extremely like practical, literal, specific. It, it doesn't get weird in the sense that I'm telling you that, oh, you have these meridian blockages and you don't know you walk away going what do I do about that I don't I don't do any of that that's not what this work is this work is identifying things that are in the body that are not supposed to be there that's what this work is so um and it can be anything it can be pathogens it can be toxins and the niche market that I'm in right now that was just I didn't mean to be in this situation but it is that I've I found technology in the body. And then it started to snowball. And then now all of a sudden, um, people are getting well when we when it uses the quantum release in conjunction with trying to remove this stuff out of the body. So that was a development I didn't see coming. And that's an inevitable outcome. To when you get accurate answers from the body and you figure out how to do that, um, then the inevitable outcome was to find this stuff. I just didn't know it. Lucky me, right? Um, And here we are. But another inevitable outcome, unintended consequences of this, is that you discover that this stuff that's in the body isn't because, like, a system failed in your body just because it wore out, or there's something wrong with your liver, or there's something wrong with this. Or I mean, there are things that are wrong, but it's not because the body is wrong. It's because there's something in the body blocking the liver from working properly, blocking the, uh, the thyroid from working property, properly, blocking the body from being able to get nutrients. So, you know, the question, the, the huge million dollar question is, is what? And pathogens and toxins make sense, right? But how did we get them? And so that's what a lot of this work is, is backward engineering those things. But once you, once I started finding technology in the body, what I discovered was there was an entire infrastructure built, multiple external infrastructures built to make it easy to put these things in the body with very few human hands or as few as possible getting in the way and that's the inevitable understanding that you get when you do this work smart dust being like an example of that which I really want to do a podcast on smart dust it just is, requires an incredible amount of data, data gathering and stuff so that I can you know communicate it properly um, so Smart dust, when you realize that it's been in your body and you know what it is and where it's been and what it's doing and then you get it removed, 
the quantum release removes it and then you start to feel better, you start to go, wait a minute, ah, wait a minute. This isn't in my head because I was sick and now I'm not sick. So something happened and then you go back and you backward engineer your life and, and, and sort of the details of the appointment and how that helps you. And you realize that there are infrastructures and grids that have been put in place to deliberately put these things in our body. <clears throat> and that's what Building the Matrix is about, that three-part series. And this is the most difficult, it, it was for me, the, one of the most difficult things to come to, I guess, come to believe or come to understand. And that is that there are evil infrastructures out there wanting to harm us on a regular basis and then optimize that harm for their financial economic benefit. And that is evil. <clears throat> the, the way you say that sort of just like the regular language would be they make you sick then when you come to them for a cure they charge you to unlock the technology that's been put in your body to make you well let me give you an example <clears throat> I use this example a lot because I've personally experienced it I um, started getting retaliation from the technology that was in my body about um, about a year and a half ago on a very, very profound level. And I started developing symptoms that I'd never had before. And this was long after I'd gotten rid of the Lyme pathogens and toxins and, you know, supplement problems and, and hormone disruptors and all that stuff that I, I tell everybody about. And the technology that was remaining really retaliated profoundly. And I started to get really, really sick. And one of the symptoms that I had was uh, extreme psoriasis. Um, um, on my skin and um, I started seeing these psoriasis commercials and they're like we can help you you know in six to eight weeks you take this medication and it will make it'll you know most people blah 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 get better and they can keep their psoriasis away and these commercials are just torment if you watch these psoriasis commercials they are unbelievable tor torment for somebody who has psoriasis it just, it really, it just is awful. So um, <clears throat> I was like, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm not taking a pharmaceutical to get rid of the psoriasis. And I started thinking about this. I'm like, the only thing that's causing my psoriasis is technology. That's it. That's the only thing. I knew this intuitively because I've been working it on this problem set for a very long time and I knew that, that this psoriasis was not because of anything that I was doing and so I refused to believe the, the commercials and I kept asking God you know what's what's the what's the help me backward engineer this and this is what I realized I realized that when you have psoriasis and you have technology in the body the technology knows every single thing that's going on in the body it can read your hormone structures. It can read the gauges in the body, the hormone levels, the nutrient levels, the endocrine releases, the viscosity of your blood. It can read anything and everything on a genome level. And so I realized that what was going on here, it was like an aha moment. What was going on was the technology creates symptom groups. And then when you go pay, the pharmaceutical industries, they will give you a medication that will signal to the technology that you've, you've done your copay. You've put, as one of my students said, you put a quarter in the meter. And every time you put a quarter in the meter, it just turns the tech off temporarily. You stop paying the meter and your symptoms come back. <clears throat> Why? Because the technology knows is validated through a number of validation structures that they implement in the system. It knows that you've put a quarter in the meter and it knows when you've stopped putting a quarter in the meter. So when you've stopped putting a quarter in the meter, you start to see those symptoms come back up again and then you become reliant upon putting a quarter in the meter. 
and it never really cures you because what I've seen with folks, particularly people that are taking biologics or other, other really, really, really dangerous drugs, that it doesn't remove the technology out of the body because you can count. You can see the technology. You can count it. You can find out um, how many is left based on medications used. Is it changing the numbers? It never changes that the technology comes out of the body. That would be stupid of them. Why would they make a medicine that would actually remove the technology? No, it suppresses or it signals to the technology in the body that can read everything that you put a quarter in the meter. You you bought that drug. And now we're going to we're going to reward you. And we'll let this system go on for quite some time. And then maybe the drug will stop working. And we're going to need you to get a, a much more a, a, diff- a different drug. Or maybe the psoriasis goes away completely and you develop rheumatoid arthritis, which is actually sometimes connected to psoriasis, but it's a separate symptom. But, um, <clears throat> or maybe you start to develop bowel trouble. Your psoriasis is gone, so you don't have to take that. Maybe you are taking that med. Maybe you maintain that medication because you want to continue not having psoriasis, not knowing that you probably won't ever get it again. And they've just changed the technology algorithms, and now you have bowel trouble. And you need colonoscopies every year because they're concerned about things that are growing inside the, inside the colon because they've created the technology algorithms to produce that result in the body. And the main way they do that is the technology modulates genome expression so that it can create certain outcomes in the body. So they can mute genome expression, they can overexpress other genome expression so that you specifically can get a predictable algorithmic controlled outcome. <clears throat> That's why you see trends of certain things. All of a sudden people developed restless leg. All of a sudden people developed different symptoms in different groups of people. It's because the technology, whatever it is, MFI, smart dust, Morgellons, human DNA, <clears throat> the myriad of things that they put in the body will express or under express mute or manipulate the genome expression. And it can, it can create any outcome that it wants. And they really don't want to kill you because if they kill you, they lose a customer. But at some point you're just useless. And they're like, well, take that one to the, to the morgue. And all of a sudden you start to deteriorate. <clears throat> once I started removing technology, back to the psoriasis question, once I started finding other grids, my psoriasis started to go away. I didn't do anything else. I'm not on protocols. I don't take a bunch of nutrients that would, you know, create a surge, a nutrient surge in the body that would create a, a you know, a pattern of healing. I just take enough to get by. I take enough to what my body tells me I need that day. I'm not on any therapies or protocols. I don't do Rife Machine anymore. I, the only thing I do is this work. That's it. And when you realize, and so anyway, so I started taking the grids down. On You know, I, can, I continued to take the grids down is really the best way to say it. And um, my psoriasis started getting better, notably, noticeably better. And that was only because I was removing technology out of the body that was controlling and maintaining those symptoms. And this podcast is really describing what happens to people a lot of the times when they have a uh, layered technology. I have layered technology. So all of us that have layered technology are waiting for that last grid to go down. That's what we're waiting for. But when you realize, you know, you go back to that, um, Go back to that example with a watch. Like if you live in a low-tech society and you find a watch on the beach and you pick it up and you look at it and you're like, whoa, I've never seen this before. And you start to try and take it apart and understand it. You realize this was deliberately made for one purpose. It's to tell time. Really sorry about the beeping. I really don't know why my car just won't leave me alone about it. So 
That's what happens when we look at this technology in the bottom. We backward engineer it and find out what its really, what its real purpose is. And its real purpose, well, one of the main purposes is to create an economic system that makes people reliant on medical care, long-term medical care, in order to stay well. That's the main piece, but and that's the that's the fringe, that's the fringe benefits of it. The the primary benefit is they get to experiment with the human genome on a mass level without putting people in concentration camps and jailing them. They can mass produce a lot of these technologies and then you can experiment them on them, experiment with them on people without ever having any physical contact with them. That's the best case scenario. I mean, really, you have fewer, you know, you have fewer variables in the process. <clears throat> and smart dust is an example of that. Smart dust is an example of mass, mass produced technology that, that can just be, I mean, smart dust is just a, basically having a computer system in your body constantly monitoring everything that you're doing. And when you realize that, that all of this is integrated into multiple systemic grids, because look, I mean, people always ask me, how, who are these people? Who is the they? Who's doing this? Yeah, who's doing this? Well, who's it benefiting? Who has to be in cahoots with this? Because if you can figure out that psoriasis, supposedly something that can only kind of be shut down by these particular pharmaceuticals, and you realize that psoriasis is highly connected to, to technology in the body, how do they know to create a drug that is put in the body that turns that technology off? That means they have to be playing, they have to be in the game somewhere. They have to be in the mix of the boardroom meetings for how this stuff goes down. They don't stumble upon something and turn off AI, okay? That is really important. You don't stumble upon something, upon a chemical. Sorry, it makes me mad. You don't stumble upon a, a chemical that turns AI off. This stuff bends light. It manipulates light in order to stay in the body. The body can't see it to take the pharmaceutical and, and put it on the technology or address it or break it apart. Because the body can't see it. It's hiding, using the bending of light. So they didn't accidentally stumble upon a bunch of cures or a bunch of treatments that help technology-driven symptoms. They have to be, they have to be colluding with whoever's putting this technology in the body. Now, wait a minute. I have found smart dust in the body, right? A lot of times. Smart dust is one of the most common things I find in people's bodies. Well, who made smart dust? All you gotta do is look it up. Literally, it's on the internet, and I know I'm being a little sarcastic here, but DARPA made that. DARPA made smart dust. So if DARPA made smart dust, and smart dust is algorithmically controlling the body, and then the pharmaceutical companies come up with some kind of medication that turns off technology, seems to me they're passing paperwork back and forth, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem like that would be the case? Seems like that would be the case to me. And then you realize, wait a minute, okay, if DARPA and the pharmaceutical industries are colluding, who else are, is colluding with these groups of people? And then you begin to look at the entire world differently. If you just watch pharmaceutical commercials with the context, with the filter, that their pharmaceuticals address a technology-driven symptom, it will change everything you know about that commercial. Look, all these words that they use, these techniques, these images that they use in the pharmaceutical companies, these are all data-driven. They're all like, they get a bunch of people together and crowdsource like the reaction. What, what is your reaction to this image versus this image? They do these focus groups 
They survey people. What's the best outcome? They probably, I wouldn't be surprised if they survey, in the, I, you know, in the example of psoriasis, if they survey people that actually have psoriasis, which images are, are harder for you to, are most, you know, create the most emotional, you know, the most, most emo, emotional response. And then use that information to tailor the, uh, the commercial after their emotional responses. Look, this technology in the body is not accidental. Any more than finding a watch on the beach being accidental, somebody made it. Somebody made it for a specific purpose. One of those purposes, money-driven money driven outcomes. Okay, but the other, the main one is it's always been about the genome. I say that a lot, but it's always been about the genome. It's just about trying to figure out how to make the genome do what they want it to do. And we're the Petri dish. We're the guinea pig, we're the lab rats. Except we have this illusion of freedom because we get to go about our business, we get to go do things, we get to buy and sell, we get to have jobs, we get to go out and you know theoretically play if we're not too sick. We get to do all these things. We're not in concentration camps, we're not in prison cells, we're not being injected um, while we're laying on a stretch, chain down, laying on a stretcher. Oh no, we willingly line up and believe the garbage that when they inject us with things, that's to our benefit. But it's just another layer of technology delivery systems. And when you realize that, look, I was not red-pilled overnight. This stuff was really hard for me to come to, to, to understand and believe. Because I really like being sort of rose-colored glasses. I don't really like looking at the world going, what institution, what institution is safe? Which institutions have not been corrupted and polluted up until this point? I don't like looking around my world with that viewpoint, that, that everything might be dangerous. But I can tell you that there's truth to the scripture. You guys all know this. My people perish from lack of knowledge. <clears throat> they just don't know. They just don't know. And that's why I started this work is because I wanted to know when I asked God, I said, God, I just, I want to know why I'm sick. This is ridiculous. I've never been this sick in my entire life. I'm owed answers. And he's like, are you sure about that? Are you sure you want to know? And here we are. We're finding out why. And it's, it's one of the most difficult shakings that I've had. It's really hard to kind of be like a normal person when you know this stuff. Because you're so red-pilled, like, you see, you see through the lies of everything. Of all the marketing, of all the infrastructure. And you just sit there and you backward engineer. Like, I don't know, there was a girl in Chick-fil-A. We, we actually did go to Chick-fil-A. We made it in time. Um, and she was talking to another girl in, in a booth about going to get her FLU injection. She's like, oh, I work around kids. So, you know, I don't really get sick that often, but I'm going to be working around kids. So I just need to make sure they're safe. Except that the flu is a weaponized genetic material. And the FLU injection doesn't, isn't what is being addressed when you get that injection. And I sat there going, oh, Lord, help me not shake that girl. Don't do it. Don't do it. I just want to like yell, don't do it. Don't do it. It's a trap. But that isn't, that's part of the, you are taking a, a group of people who have been, I have been brainwashed. We have been brainwashed to believe these things because, okay, so who's colluding with that? Who else is connected to the brainwashing? The media? And we just believe them. The scientists, the doctors, we just believe them because they're authority figures. And we're like, hey, we don't have time to do this, the research and the math. So we're just going to trust the guys that write the white papers and publish them in the journals. We just have to trust all that. But the red pill isn't just about, you know, like the media's fake and 
the injections, which I can't say that V word, right? Because I'll totally get banned or whatever. But, you know, the injections are bad. You shouldn't do that. <clears throat> it's, it's more than that. It's that the entire infrastructure is built to weaponize this technology as best as possible and also gain financial reward from its manipulation and from its, its optimized use in the body. I just can't tell you how sick I was. I just, I can't describe it. The pain levels were unbelievable. And the very fact that the only thing I was doing to get well was this work and I was getting successful at it and being good and doing it and um, getting good at it told me that this is, the rabbit hole is deeper than we thought. So the part of Part of this work is yes, we just get the stuff out of the body. People get well and they move on with their life. And there's there's a cut there's you know there's a couple types of people that I work with. They're like, ah, oh, I just want to feel well. I don't know what you do, but I'm I'm so glad you do it. And they just move on. They go back to their life and they just live a really good abundant life. They have quantum release. They figured out the supplement thing for themselves and they don't need me anymore. And they're, that's totally fine. That's exactly the op, that's exactly the situation you want. But then there's others that go, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is going on here? I want to know more. And that's what this podcast is about. It's digging in just a little bit more, just a little bit more of a red pill going, wait a minute, wait a minute. There is more here. I want you to see that there's more. That these systems, these quantum systems, are integrated into the very society that we live in. And, the, and there are many infrastructures that are dependent on the economic outcome that these quantum systems provide for them. You realize these quantum systems that make you sick put food on somebody else's table. Buy somebody else's Ferrari, somebody else's Mercedes Benz, somebody else's pool, and trips to Italy. But it also trickles down to the just the you know the medium wage worker helps feed their families. There are entire systems built upon de- being dependent upon this technology being a major money maker. Major, major, major money maker. And this is one of those reasons why the infrastructure is built so significantly around these technologies being highly productive and highly accurate um, that when my clients get well, they go, I don't really know what to tell my doctor. Like, what am I supposed to tell them? How do I explain that I got well? I'm like, I don't know. Just don't, just tell them you don't feel bad anymore. That's all you do. And then do you have to go to your doctor? Do you have to tell them? I mean, why do we have to go to doctors and report back to them? Are we obligated? Is there some kind of contract that we signed? And that's what irritates me is they've so strong armed you that you believe we believe whatever who you is or who we are. We believe that we have to go back and tell them, well, I went to this thing and my symptoms stopped and I don't really know why, but now I don't feel like I have to pay you any more money because I don't I'm not sick anymore. So if you could take my pick line out and um, stop prescribing me drugs, I'd really appreciate it. That's literally the types of situations that come my way. But that's, what do you you do about that? So I think the sum total, the the takeaway from kind of what I really wanted to talk about is that I really wanted to bring home 
the fact that this isn't just about having a little tiny piece of technology in the body, a teeny tiny little speck of smart dust that just you inhaled accidentally that might have, you know, sort of accidentally got into your lymph system and now is kind of accidentally making you sick and you have to, you know, take this medication and you kind of sort of sometimes feel better but sometimes not and... No, this is a deliberate infrastructure that is specific to you, to people, to us, to make us sick, to make us reliant, to experiment on us, to do it on purpose. I wish I could say it was just for economic benefit, that that was the main reason. It is a it is a major reason, but it's not the main reason. The main reason isn't so that people could get rich, although that is a nice fringe benefit, right? But for them, but it's really mainly about the genome. And remember, since the garden, it was always about the genome. It was always about a seed war. It was always about the genetic material because genetic material is the most amazing thing on this planet. And fertilized genetic material is a self-replicating quantum system. Now think about that for a second. It's always been about the genome. It's always about trying to make the genome do what they want it to do. Because if you can control the genome, you can control anything and everything. And they've had the freedom in the United States to just run rampant with these experiments with these dark projects. So maybe this just will prime the pump a little bit. As I begin to go deeper and further on this channel about the types of things that are in the body, I hope that this begins to shed a little bit of light about how it's all coordinated. But you first have to believe that it's coordinated. If you don't believe that it's coordinated, you can't understand how it's being coordinated. So, I appreciate your patience through this diatribe, but I wanted to share that with you today. It was really what was on my mind before I went down the rabbit hole with uh, glyphosate, but um, I really appreciate you guys listening to the podcast, and uh, I'm trying to put more out while I'm on my break. I'm on Christmas break, and um, I, I really appreciate that you guys are checking into the YouTube channel. Um, also, in the beginning of the year, I've been he having a lot of people ask me about taking clients again. I will very likely, probably, most surely be taking uh, new clients again. I just needed a break. I needed to be able to kind of handle the deluge that I was experiencing after the Kingdom Talks, uh, that, um, that really fun interview with Adina and Gil so, um, and Melody. So I needed a little bit of a breather so I could create some infrastructure to better serve clients. So I apologize that I haven't been able to do that, but in the new year, I'll be able to do that. Um, the group appointments are working really well. The, the five-person group appointments are working pretty well, so we will probably integrate that again. And then uh, just kind of move some of the possibilities around so that I can serve you guys a little bit better. So um, anyway, so I hope you guys have a great Christmas. Great if you celebrate Christmas. Um, if you don't, I hope you have a great holiday, whatever you uh, celebrate, and a, and a wonderful new year. And just really that we um, just worship the Lord all together during the season and really focus on family and loving one another and being at peace and having joy. And I'm really grateful for my clients, really grateful for you guys praying uh, for this work and praying for me and praying for each other. It's amazing what you guys are doing, just continuing to lift us up and um, just thank you. We're just seeing the fruit of that. I, I feel the fruit of that. Um, and I, I'm so appreciative. So if you're new to this broadcast, if you're new to Quantum Command, I highly recommend you um, check out some of my previous podcasts, particularly the one that Why Do We Need the Quantum to Get Well? Um, that one really helps you understand kind of what we're dealing with in the body. So Thank you guys so much for listening. If you're interested in scheduling an appointment with me, um, check everything out in the new year. Otherwise, we will see you on the next broadcast. Take care.